Hi guys and good morning and welcome back to the More Than Cars YouTube channel. You join me today on an extremely bright and sunny Sunday morning in England and I'm with a 330D BMW Estate. This is the courtesy car lent to me by, well, McLaren Assistance, so that's really Enterprise Rent-A-Car. But I thought I'd make a review on it because I've been surprised by the car and actually, to say these, you can pick these up for £17,000, actually, they're not bad at all. This particular model, if we have a closer look, is actually a 330D SE. So this is not the M Sport model. So if we take a little a brief look around the car, we don't have the larger, um, I think you get 19 inch wheels. These are only the, I believe they are 18s or 17s, they're 18s on these, but actually looks all right. Obviously it's a rental car, so we've got a few little scuffs and things on it, but actually it's done 25,000 miles and it's quite nice to be honest quite surprised and for me very odd to have a four-door car so it's quite nice to try some something new something a bit different so let's uh, roll the b-roll and I'll jump in and go for a drive Hello and welcome inside the BMW 330D Estate SE. A lot of names. Let's go. Not used to a normal handbrake now with the Aston and McLaren. Most of those are electronic. Now I don't know if you've followed me for that long, but I actually had a 420D. So this back then would have been quite a step up into a three litre version. I did have the M Sport and actually I think I can tell straight away. I think the M Sport had slightly firmer suspension. I could just be completely making that up and it's just because this bad boy is about the length of a boat. It's quite long. Extremely sunny morning but uh, I think this is all right actually. It's um, a little bit wallowy and I think that's, I think that's par se what's happened to the latest generation BMWs, to be honest. I had, ages and ages ago, way before Instagram, I actually had a V8 M3, the two-door one, the coupe version. And I love that car, absolutely love that car. And actually, to, that, to this day, I still believe that is one of the best driving vehicles that I've been in, that you could have fun with at 30 miles an hour and that's my thing I keep going back to the Vantage you can have fun with at 30 miles an hour that V8 it used once it warmed up used to pull off in second gear and you could have fun with it at 30 miles an hour and I keep saying that because you can't do silly speeds in normal roads you're not allowed to it's it's illegal so why don't you base this or base what you actually get out of a car at the legal road limit so we're doing 30 miles an hour now and this is quite clearly designed to be something to get you from a to b in quite a lot of comfort it's absorbing a lot of bumps and you've got to remember you can pick one of these up for seventeen thousand pounds now and actually i think that's that's a lot of car for your money and if i just boot my foot down it takes a while to realize but it's certainly got enough torque and we're at 60 straight away what i clearly shouldn't be doing in a built-up area but i think it's brilliant 17 grand what else could you get for seventeen thousand pounds that actually is this practical you can get the audi or mercedes equivalent and i think they're clearly the only um, comparisons that i can have to, I've, I've never driven either estates before. I've, I've never driven an estate before, actually. Not quite, considering this is a courtesy car for McLaren. <laughs> but, actually, I'm enjoying it. It's good fun. Like I said with the 4 before video, it's nice to be in something 
completely different that you can actually get to enjoy. So what's this car got? Well, I don't know actually because I haven't got the spec sheet. I know it's an SE, definitely not the M Sport because there's no M emblem anywhere and everybody knows if you've bought a BMW M or M pack, they plaster M everywhere on it. So it's, it's definitely an SE. It's got the LED, LED, I believe it's the laser LED lights on it. Or certainly there's some form of BMW LED light logo around the lights. Other than that, heated seats, the standard BMW interior. We'll talk on that in a second, but as a car, the way it drives, I don't think you can fault it. It drives much the same as any modern vehicle. A little bit wallowy, a little bit disconnected from the road, um, but that's the trait that a lot of manufacturers has, have gone towards now. They, they seem to lack the um, driver connectedness that the older cars seem to have had. An extremely bumpy bit of road and it absorbs that quite well. But the interior, BMW's interior, this is a 17 reg, so, well, we've just hit 2019, so it's only two years old. And if I'm being completely honest, it, it feels like a car that's probably five or six year old. That's because the interior is, I don't think they've changed anything other than the LED heads up or whatever this large screen is that isn't actually doing anything. But certainly the navigation around oh that's new that's actually completely different the actual look of that compared to my old um v m3 v8 but other than that this feels like i've stepped back into that other than it sounds like a tank but then again it is a diesel so i i've kind of got to excuse that i like it what do you think do you guys like estate cars? I know the Audi RS, I think it's 6 or RS7, or is it RS8? I don't know. The, the estate version of that, that seems to get a lot of love. And I think that actually looks really, really nice. Um, I think BM could have done a bit more with the later, latest looks of their cars. I don't think they've particularly stretched their design ethos, probably. Um, I think some of their older cars, certainly the my old V8, I still still really actually like the look of it. Um, I'm not so keen on the new M4s though. I don't know if any of you guys have driven any of those, but I actually don't particularly like the way they drive. I think they feel very disconnected, much much like much like these. You, you're not quite sure what what it's doing. It feels a bit loose on the old um, steering wheel. Shall we talk about Enterprise Rinter Car? Because this only being two years old, 17, yeah, 18, 19, two, just two years old, it seems a bit grotty. The steering wheel looks like it's been lacquered with, um, <laughs> well, lacquer. It's extremely shiny and a little bit squidgy, where I don't think it should be squidgy. And there's a very interesting smell. Very interesting smell. Thanks for indicating, by the way. Other than that, it's neat and tidy. Oh, there's a USB port that I wouldn't have had on my V8. But actually, on my V8, it had the same aluminium interior. Aluminium trim everywhere. I mean, it flows. It looks fairly reasonable. Um, stop start, obviously. But I feel at home. Not electric seats, but electric side bolsters. It's a bit uninviting, really. Um, or shall I say un un unexciting? Uninviting and unexciting. What is that noise? There is some strange noise coming from the car. I don't know if you heard that. It was like a vibrating sound, but... Nice to pootle around in something different for a couple of days while the McLaren's being looked at, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend one of these to anybody unless you need to transport loads of stuff as well as, yes, three people or four people, including the one up front. 
yeah, I'm not a fan. Would I liked it in a different colour? Probably not. Don't think it's the appearance from the outside that puts me off. Probably the M Sport Pack, bigger wheels. Probably a little bit sportier suspension would have helped a little bit, but no, it's not a car for me, not a car I'd particularly recommend to anybody. The 330D engine, on the other hand, I think has got enough, certainly got enough power to have some fun with on some roads. Um, it's not particularly got any noise to it, but then again, it's an estate family car, so you don't necessarily want a load of screaming engine notes from it. But yeah, reasonable car, but for 17 grand, that's not bad. You've got to put it in money perspective. So what's an update for me and the channel? Well, as most of you guys know, I've had a few little woes with the McLaren. Hopefully that has now been resolved. I will disclose more when, well, when the replacement possibly arrives. Let you think on that one. And yes, it is going to be another McLaren. I love the brand. The brand and what they're doing technology-wise, I think the way they look, for me, that plays homage to what I do for work. So I'm not going to go to Lamborghini. I did did test drive a Lamborghini, did test drive a Ferrari. They're just not for me. The, the cars are great. I'm not, I can't say a bad word about them actually. And I think the Performante was actually a brilliant car to drive. And I think I would have a, a hell of a lot of fun on track with one of those. But as a car that I personally could use on a dailyable basis, it's certainly not something I'd want to entertain. And one of the biggest surprises for me was I went to a car meet this well yesterday morning and actually the amount of Aventador SVs that turned up there was two standard Aventadors and I think five SVs and there wasn't a single standard Hurricane there was at least I'm going to say at least six or seven Performantes actually to be fair fair few 720s there was Four, yes, four 720s, two 600 LTs as well. What surprised me to see them out and about. Um, but to me, you see McLarens rarer than any of the others. Obviously, there was actually not that many Ferraris there, not many 488s. Um, there was a few, but not, not particularly many. Also, they were in quite dark colours, so I don't think they stood out to me as much. No idea what's going on with the traffic here, so let's let's spin round and go home a different way. But yeah, what I'm trying to say is I personally still think McLaren for me is a brand that I like, enjoy. I know people complain a lot about the fact that they roll out a lot of cars, but to me that just gives more opportunity to get in the latest and greatest shall we say so that to me doesn't bother me we understand there's depreciation there's depreciation with everything at the moment look at the gt3 um, rs market at the moment that's just dropped um, a fair fair bit you can get a you can get in one of those the gen one ones for 150 ish 155 for a you know a decent ish ish one there is depreciation i don't think mclaren are alone with that um, so I don't think that's a particular argument. Um, yeah, and again, the only thing to step up-wise from a 720S in looks and performance was would be an Aventador. And for me, if I was going to go to one, it would be an SV. A, I can't get my hands on an SVJ, and at the moment you'd be playing silly amounts of money over list price, and I'm not interested in doing that. Um, and I think... Uh, the Ventador S obviously is the latest car as it were but again I don't think they're particularly special you see a lot of them uh, so I think if I was going to go to any it would be in an SV but I certainly couldn't possibly use that on a dailyable basis so yeah for me it's still McLaren I still love them I still think they look great I know I've had issues let's move on it's only a car, uh, let's move on. Uh, and I know there's a lot of talk around, obviously, the, the Senna's and some of the 
incidents that have happened with them. But at the end of the day, I think I got an unlucky 720s. I want to move on to, you've heard it first, the 720s Spider. One has 100% been ordered. It's going to arrive as soon as it's built. Um, I'm super excited for it. I I still think they are fantastic cars. Oh, Ferrari, California. Nice. And I don't know if I've got a camera that's pointing that way, but hopefully I have, because that just summed up possibly why I don't want a Ferrari. No offence to any of you Ferrari lovers out there, but certainly the types of people who potentially own some Ferraris, I'm not saying all, I'm going to say probably the ones that are a couple of years old. Uh, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the comments if you think you know what I'm on about. Anyway, i am been blabbering on. Yeah, it's a 330D, definitely not for me. I hope you found this video vaguely entertaining. Um, don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, because in the upcoming months there is plenty of um, fun times and messing about coming and the Twizy will be coming back to the channel very, very shortly. So smash the thumbs up button, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, PhilDixon89. Thanks very much for watching. See you later.